Are you running to win? 1 Corinthians 9.24 reads, Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one gets the prize? So run to win. The call of God to every Christian is that we would run our race with both effort and excellence. The Christian race is life's most important event. I invite you to join me for today's message entitled, Run to Win. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. Open up your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And I'm going to read to you this morning, actually, out of the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation of 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse number 24 says this. It says, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one gets the prize. So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away but we do it for an eternal prize. So run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. I want to share with you this morning a message that I truly believe the Lord put on my heart for today, and that is I'm going to talk to you about running to win, running with excellence, running to win. Each one of us here today have a race. There's a purpose that God put us on this earth, not just on this earth, but on this earth at this particular period of time. We're living at the end times. We're living at the end of the end times. We're living deeper in time than anybody else has ever lived. Can I get an amen on that, all right? So we're living at a time that's very crucial. It's very important that we understand why God put us here on planet Earth. Whenever you take a job, in the natural, if you take a job, one of the first things you want to know, what is my job description? I mean, what do you want me to do? What's your expectation of me? And whenever we come into the kingdom of God, it's only natural to say, Lord, you know, what are your expectations? What do you want for me? Why have you called me? So this morning, when I talk about a call or a race, all of us in this room in the eyes of God are athletes. All of us have an event. All of us have a function. We all have a role. Now, just like in the natural realm, you might have a swimmer, a pole vaulter, a high jumper, somebody who throws the discus, You could have another person that's in gymnastics, another person that, you know, is in some other type of event. But there's going to be an overlapping similarity of every single Olympic athlete. And the overlapping similarity is this, they're all disciplined. The swimmer is going to be disciplined in their regiment to be trained as a swimmer. The pole vaulter is going to be disciplined in his role. The hurdler is going to be disciplined in their role. And the list goes on and on. So the key for all of us is to realize if we're going to run to win, there must be discipline in our life. Now, I'm not disciplined as a Christian in order to earn righteousness. I do not discipline my life that some way or another, if I'm real disciplined, I have right standing with God. No, my right standing with God is a gift. Romans 5, 17 says the righteousness is a gift of God. But yet, as a believer, I know that I'm called to run the race, and I'm called to win the race. And so God wants there to be disciplines in all of our lives, and the purpose for those disciplines is that we can reach our highest potential, that we can fulfill our purpose in life. Now, I know most of us, if you've been in church for any length of time, you've heard this statement. We're in a not in a sprint, we're in a marathon. Christianity is not a sprint. Your Christian life is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Well, I heard a pastor in Tulsa, Pastor Mark Brzee at World Outreach Church, he made this statement, and I thought it was so good. He said, it's really not a marathon so much as it's not a sprint, 
It's a relay race. Our Christian life is a relay race. We're to run with everything we have, but at the end of our race, when the Lord, if the Lord hasn't come and we go by way of the grave, you know what we're to do? We're to take the baton and we're to put it squarely in the hands of the next generation so they can run the race and they can fulfill their destiny and their purpose. So God has called us into this relay race. And just like there are a lot of different athletes that have a lot of different skills and abilities, in the body of Christ, you have a lot of people that have different callings. You have some people that are called into music. You have other people that are called into intercessory prayer. You have other people that are called administratively. And all of those elements are imperative. All of them are important. I mean, you can't prioritize one over the other. All of them work together, just like the human body. You can't prioritize the kidneys over the liver. I mean, no, you need both of them, right? You can't prioritize some internal organ and say, well, this is real important to the exclusion of the other. Well, my lungs are important, but my heart isn't. They're both important. And so we need to recognize and respect and honor all the members of the body of Christ. So you're in a race, and that race is to fulfill the will of God with your life, and that call is going to look slightly different on different people. But together, we make up a team. We are the body, just like you have all these different athletes whenever there, is, there are the Olympic Games. And all of these athletes have different individual events, but they're all underneath the same flag, and they are representing the United States. You and I represent the kingdom of God. We represent the eternal kingdom. And so we all have different purposes. We have different roles. We have different responsibilities but we're all called to run to win. Now, honestly, not a judgment, but just an honest observation. Sometimes I honestly think there are Christians, they're not running to win, actually they're running to lose. They're putting very little effort into what God is, wants them to do. They're not really running to win as it relates to their children. I wonder, are you running to lose? I mean, when you blow up in the house and you let off this double life in front of your kids, do you think that's helping them in their spiritual walk? Do you think that sends a confusing thought in their mind? Whenever you have constant strife going on in a marriage and yet you say, well, I'm, you know, we're a Christian family, does that not confuse a child? You see, people say, oh, we're running to win, but by their actions, they're really demonstrating you're running to lose. You're, you're sending the wrong message out in your family. You see, if there's any part of your life, like Sharon said this morning, we need to prioritize the spirit man. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, when Paul prayed, I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body would be preserved blameless. You notice he started with the word spirit, and then he went to the word soul, and then he went to the word body. What is God's plan? Is that the spirit of man would take number one priority. So our spiritual race, our, our number one race is spiritually, let's be fit in the kingdom of God. So you're in the race, and you're in a, a race at a very unique time. Why? Because the last person to get the baton, if it's a relay with four runners, the last runner needs to be your fastest runner. The last runner needs to be the quickest runner. And you and I are living deep into time, and God's true plan for the church is not that our generation would dilute down the gospel. Our generation would have a, a, a more shallow commitment to the Lord than the previous generation that our generation would look for ways of, of skipping out on important you know, matters that relate to the kingdom of God. God's plan is that the last group of people that run the race before the coming of the Lord, that they're actually the fastest, that they're running to win, that they're giving it their very best. And the good news is I'm looking at that group of people, amen? amen. People that aren't just part-time Christians, well, I have my spiritual life, but now I've done my spiritual thing, but I want to go have fun. 
Well, the kingdom, everything we do, whether we eat or drink, we do everything to the glory of God. So our whole life is spiritual. Whatever we do, it's spiritual. Can I really get an amen on that? You know, I worked out in the yard yesterday. Well, the good thing about working in the yard is there are no interruptions for the most part. And it's just a wonderful time to talk to the Lord. And, you know, I was out just working yesterday, and I was thinking about this whole aspect of running to win. And one of the things that the Lord just impressed upon me was is that every time you get a baton in your hand, you better start running. When you get the baton, it's not time to kind of, hey, y'all, I got the baton. And it's time to kick it in gear and to run. And I just wonder how many believers, there is a genuine call. There's a true mandate that's been passed on into your life, but you're really not running with energy and effort. You're not running with a sense of focus, but you're kind of preoccupied in the now. I know just recently I saw a clip where a guy was running a race and He really, he had run the race and he was way ahead and he thought, I'm gonna just kind of coast in the last, I'd say maybe the last 20, 30 yards of the race, he just started slowing down a little bit. And right as he slowed down, another person just buzzed past him and won the race just by just a small margin, but it was enough to make the difference. You know, when we go into this season of our life, this time of our life, God wants us to put our very best into the last days. God wants to put our very best into the day that we're living in. So here's a couple of thoughts today. Number one thought is, if you're gonna run to win, the thing that distinguishes those that are running to win and those that are really running to lose is focus. Where's your heart? What's your priority? What do you want out of life? You say, well, pastor, the kingdom business, that's really not a big priority to me. Well, it's a priority to God. Well, it's really not that important, but it should be important because there's nothing that's more important because when you take care and you tend to your spiritual life, here's what happens. Every other thing is added unto you. When you put God first, there's a scripture in the Old Testament about a king that said, as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord calls him to prosper. As long as he sought the Lord, the Lord caused him to prosper. As long as we're putting the Lord first in our life, other things begin to fall into place. So have focus in your life. Let it be your number one goal, your number one priority. What is your number one priority? It's my spiritual life. I said this last week, but it bears repeating. When you put God first, hear this, you become a better husband, you become a better wife, you become a better mother, father, you become a better employee, you become better at everything that you touch in life because when you put God first, hear this, when you put him first, everything else starts working out. Now, when you put him second or third or fourth, you'll discover that things start coming up short. So when you put the Lord first in your life, when you take care of your spiritual life, I promise you this, you'll be a better spouse. Thanks for joining me today. Remember, the Christian race is a relay race. We are called to pass the baton to the next generation. It's important that you run your leg of the race. God has reserved his fastest runners for the end of time. The Christian race is life's most important event. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.